Hello YouTube, my name is Trainer Teo, and today I will be giving my updated thoughts on the new trailers released for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, as well as Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, if you guys want to go see my original thoughts on the original trailers that came out, you can click the little I card in the top right of the screen. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, Diamond and Pearl, the Diamond and Pearl remakes. Um, I wasn't too impressed with the uh, first trailer that came out. Uh, given the second trailer, though, uh, my thoughts have changed on this game. Is it a day one cop? I wouldn't say so. Uh, again, there isn't anything really new about it. They aren't adding anything new. They're just, uh, as the trailer said, they're refreshing a lot of the old mechanics from those games. Um, now the first mechanic I'm going to talk about is uh, the stickers. So these stickers in Diamond and Pearl, originally uh, you would just get like these different stickers. I forget how you would get them, uh, probably from a shop. They had like specific kinds of stickers and stuff. And you would stick them on different parts of the Pokeball. And then um, when you would get into battle, depending on where you put it, depending on how many you put, I, I'm pretty sure there was a limit of 20, and in the screenshot that I took, I think you can see that there's also a limit of 20 stickers that you can put on the Pokeball. Uh, but depending on where you put them, uh, it would have like a, a specific effect in that region of uh, like the blast radius of when the Pokemon erupts from the ball. This is a really cool concept. The fact that they kind of give you like a 360 uh, view of the Pokeball that you can put the stickers on. So I'm guessing um, in that blast radius, if you put like, I don't know, a confetti on um, the north, south, east, and west of the Pokeball, um, then when the Pokemon erupts from the Pokeball uh, in those same cardinal points, you'll get confetti on, on those sides, right? Uh, so that's really, really awesome. Really, really like that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the style shop. Now, this is great. I like being able to customize uh, my character, albeit these uh, styles, I guess you would say. It's, it's just a style. It is what it is. You're going to be stuck with um, a specific hat, a specific top, specific pants and shoes. I'm not sure if you'll be able to like mix and match, uh, which isn't bad. Again, we're, we're not stuck with one outfit throughout the whole game, so... I approve it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the uh, the super contest shows. Uh, contests have always been something that I found fun ever since um, Ruby and Sapphire. I really enjoyed them, uh, but now it looks like they're kind of adding more to it. It's not just um, you need to use a move, and depending on what move you use, it'll either hinder or enhance your performance. Right? Uh, it also looks like there's I'm not really sure what to call it, but uh, in, in like music games, uh, beat games where you have to like press certain buttons at specific times, it looks something like that. Looks pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, there's that. Also, I'm gonna try and do this in one take. So I'm sorry if there's a lot of ums and whatnot. Um, but the next thing I'm gonna talk about is I think I just did it there. <laughs> is the Grand Underground. Uh, the underground was one of my favorite parts of Diamond and Pearl. I loved uh, going into the underground um, and digging with my DS. It was one of the, the, the more fun experiences I've had uh, with my DS. Uh, but now they've also added something called hideaways, which are these mystery rooms of sorts where when you enter them, there are Pokemon that will appear in them. And f as what I've gathered from the trailer, there are specific Pokemons that you will only find in these hideaways. Uh, the example that they showed, I'm not really sure if it was an example because they kind of went both ways. Uh, depending on statues that you place into your hideout, you will get a specific buff for that kind of, um, for that type of Pokemon. So for example, in the trailer, there was... Um, a Gyarados, Floatzel, and a Piplup or a Squirtle statue, I forget. And that said that it would slightly raise the chance of there being water-type Pokemon in these hideaways. 
And then uh, later on in the trailer, it showed uh, the character running into one of these hideaways, and it was like a little volcanic area, and there was a houndoom, uh, which, as everyone knows, Diamond and Pearl, notorious for only having two fire types, the starter uh, Chimchar and its evolutionary line, and then Ponyta and Rapidash. Um, so I'm guessing Houndoom is going to be one of those few Pokemon that you're going to be able to find exclusively in the hideaways, uh, which is really nice. It adds a new element to the underground and it really helps bolster the underground because it was already a fun concept. Uh, but now from all the, uh, the images and the little mini maps in the trailers that I've seen, it looks like there's going to be a lot of stuff in the underground, which is going to be great. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about... Uh, Diamond and Pearl is that they brought back Pokemon following the trainer. That's always been like a desire for every single person that's ever played a Pokemon game. Ever since Pokemon Yellow, people loved it. So um, yeah, that's pretty much my opinion. I'm I'm hyped for this game now. Uh, I'm excited to see more. I want to know if there's going to be more. I'd like to see more. Uh, will Megas or Dynamax Pokemon be in this game? I highly doubt that because I feel like they would have showed it off already. Um, but with that being said, that was that was my take on uh, the, the Diamond and Pearl remake trailers. And now I'm going to move on to the Pokemon Legends Arceus portion of this video. So yeah. We just learned that the Sinnoh region was once called the uh, Hisui region, uh, which is crazy because it made me <laughs> start thinking as to why this region was never called Sinnoh from the beginning, right? Because usually, I'm not going to get into history and whatnot, um, but yeah, I'm just, I, I want to know more about the history of the Hisui region uh, because it's right off the bat this trailer the first trailer was hyped enough right but the second trailer really expanded on a lot of what people wanted to see which is just phenomenal right so i think the most exciting thing that a lot of people are really talking about is the new slash old slash extinct pokemon that have been revealed uh so i'm going to start off with growlithe uh, the Hisuian Growlithe is a rock fire type. Uh, it's said that the its fur is extremely soft, uh, but the fur on its head is made of rock and it breaks easily. How crazy is that? This Pokemon looks amazing and it reminds me of um, certain statues in Asian cultures. Uh, they're like guardian deities. It's uh, the way that I always described it uh, is like a dog dragon. So it's like a mix between a dog and a dragon. So I really think that this um, Hisuian Growlithe is uh, going to be even more inspired by this statue uh, because Arcanine, uh, I think, is loosely based off of that as well as maybe like a tiger or whatever. Um, but I'm really excited to see what Hisuian Arcanine looks like. And I'm hoping that they don't pull some crap like, oh, it's Hisuian Growlithe, but then when it evolves, it's just Arcanine. Uh, so I hope that's not the case. But so far, super impressed with this Pokemon. When I first saw it, I was like, oh my god, is this a new Pokemon? Come to find out, it's 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 a Growlithe. It's, it's a, a variant of Growlithe, which is really, really cool. Next, I'm going to be talking about um, Hisuian Braviary, which is a psychic flying type. Now, this Pokemon is basically going to be your your ride Pokemon. Uh, so, Hisuian Braviary is going to basically be your flying companion. Now, I'm not sure if the Professor or uh, Silene is going to give this Pokemon to you once you need to start traveling further beyond um, the, that little Jubilife a village outpost um, but it's looking it's looking really cool I really enjoy its design it's really pretty and I'm getting a lot of um, Galarian Articuno vibes just because of that visor that's above its eyes looks really really sweet um, yeah I think that's that's pretty much it on um, Hisuian Braviary 
Next, I'm going to be talking about um, Weird Deer, which is a psychic normal evolution of Stantler. This is going to be your uh, land ride Pokemon. Uh, again, I'm not sure if this Pokemon is going to be given to you or if you're going to have to catch it in order to go further. Personally, uh, with all these ride Pokemon, I would like to be able to, to catch them, which would enable me to go further and not just, you know, uh, be given it as a handout. Um, this evolution looks amazing. As I said, it's a psychic normal type. Um, its name really made me believe of made me believe made me think of a wyvern. Um, I'm I'm not sure which Asian culture um, believes in this myth, uh, but it's uh, like a reindeer dragon. I wish I could put a picture up of it, but I've already like laid out my whole uh, video. So I'm not going to be adding more things, but you should look it up. It looks really, really sweet. And I was thinking, oh, damn, did they just make like Stantler like insanely amazing and make make it like a, a psychic dragon type or something? Uh, but no, it's a, it's a normal psychic type. And to be honest, I'm not disappointed, um, but also kind of a little disappointed because <laughs> it would have been cool if it was a dragon reindeer. Right. That would have been amazing. Uh, in terms of design, I love it. I love the white. I love its antlers. It just, it also screams like electric type to me. I don't know why, but it just does. Uh, but again, beautiful design. Love the concept. Perfect. Uh, next up, I'm going to be talking about Baskew Legion. Now, this Pokemon is going to be your water ride uh, Pokemon. And during the trailer, uh, the announcer uh, said that this Pokemon um, evolves when it basically like takes in the souls of all the delete the deceased Basculin that couldn't make it upstream, uh, which makes it a water ghost type. I find that so awesome. Its design is just beautiful. I love like the the red, like I, I don't know what you would call that. Is that like a like an aura, an energy? something it just looks amazing i love it uh since we haven't seen pictures of Basculin, i really want to know if this is going to be the typical um like red and blue Basculin from unova or if it's going to be a whole new design or if we're going to get two Basculin legions one red one blue right who knows i really don't know <laughs> Um, but yeah, these designs are awesome. And also, I forgot to mention, back to the Growlithe, I wonder, because we have a ride for land, sea, and air, I wonder if the Growlithe is going to be a ride for mountains, right? Because Mount Coronet is literally right smack dab, excuse me, is right smack dab in the middle of the region. And I feel like Mount Coronet, well, not I feel, excuse me, Mount Coronet is a very, very important aspect of the Sinnoh region and Arceus. Because, as we all know, Arceus lives atop Mount Coronet. So, uh, yeah, it'd be cool if the Hisuian Arcanine uh, is your mountain ride. That would be amazing. Uh, I, I would personally like that. Uh, but who knows, maybe Word Deer is going to be strong enough to, to bring us up a mountain, right? Uh, but yeah, finally, I'm going to be talking about the battle system. Uh, if you guys watched my last video, you'll know that I was really vocal about a better, ba a better battle system. Uh, this isn't quite what I envisioned or what I wanted, uh, but I'm not going to lie. I'm enjoying the difference uh, that they included, and I'm going to get more into it right now. They have two different styles, which really reminded me of um, Urshifu. Basically, there's going to be two different fighting styles called Agile and Strong. Now, to start off with the Agile style, basically what this does is it trades strength for speed. And so basically, the faster a Pokemon is, is the more times they get to attack uh, like per round, I would say. Um, so, for example, if you have a Crobat, as seen in the image, uh, Crobat is a very notoriously fast Pokemon, right? So if you use Agile Style, there's a good chance that you'll be able to attack four to five times before your opponent 
can even land a hit, right? So you'll be able to knock it out super, super quick. Um, but now on the other hand, uh, with the right on, you can see that there is uh, the strong style. Now this is, you're essentially trading speed for strength. So right on notoriously slow Pokemon. Um, so this would work better essentially because he isn't so fast. So you would basically trade instead of attacking maybe twice before your opponent can, you'll only be able to attack once. Or maybe you'll only be able to attack uh, once after your opponent attacks you three times. Uh, so this, this just brings a whole new mechanic. I think it refreshes the typical battle style that we've seen. It's, it's going to be a crazy game. I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, is this an instant cop? Is this a day one cop? 110%. Uh, I really want to experience this game uh, firsthand um, and just get to see this uh, this region for myself and get to explore it. Uh, I think it's going to be a really, really awesome game. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Um, if you guys enjoyed, let me know uh, by giving me a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you want to see more of these discussions slash talk videos. I enjoy doing these, even though I don't do these so often. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So leave a like, subscribe for more. And in the comments, uh, let me know what you think about uh, these new Pokemon slash maybe extinct Pokemon. I'll catch you guys later. See ya.